Anytime an NBA player struggles, a lot of fans are quick to say, trade this player, he sucks, he no longer fits the team, but no one lo really looks beyond the struggles. Why is that player struggling? What is the reason beyond maybe injuries? What is the human aspect of athletes that we don't look at? This is something I emphasized two videos ago, and I'm going to be talking about Fred Van Leet's recent struggles, and I found something which may help indicate why Fred has been struggling. I'm also going to do some video breakdown as well, so make sure, guys, to stick around. I know you're tempted to go in the comment section and write Fred sucks, but maybe this video changes your mind on some of his recent struggles and shed some light on that. So if you're ready to watch this video, make sure to hit the subscribe button. And with that being said, let's get into today's video. Now, as you guys know, I do like to give out shout outs on my channel and the shout out for today's video goes out to Azan Perdan. Thank you so much for supporting this channel to your likes and comments. It is very much appreciated. Now, let's quickly touch upon Fred's struggles because all the time when we hear fans suggest that that player is struggling, no one actually looks at it from a logical point of view. Now, consider Fred Van Leet's struggles this season shooting-wise because that is the strength of his game. He's a shooter. Yet, Fred Van Leet, who has never shot below 36%, is shooting a career-low 34% from the three-point line. Why is that? A year removed from being an all-star, why is that? His field goal percentage is also at an all-time worst. If you take out his first season with the Toronto Raptors, he's shooting 35.7% from the field, which is, let's be honest, terrible. And I'm not going to justify his struggles he has definitely struggled but we don't look at the human aspect of why nba players struggled and this is why i believe he's been struggling his wife is pregnant or his fiance i should say is pregnant now i do not have kids myself but i can't imagine what it's like to take care of a wife who looks like who's about to probably give birth in the next few weeks and also taking care of two young ones Maybe this is why Fred Van Lee has had a rough start to the season. Maybe this could be contributed to why he has been struggling. I don't think I need to remind fans. The last time he was struggling in the playoffs, his fiance was also pregnant. And as soon as she gave birth, he turned around and he turned into a completely different player. So let's hope that's the case with Fred Van Lee. But I do want to do a video breakdown for you guys because there's been a lot of chatter about Fred Van Lee if he's struggling so much offensively. Why is he still in the game? Well, let's do that video breakdown for you guys here. I want you guys to watch this clip of Jason Tatum and I'll break it down for you guys here. Now, as you see here, Jason Tatum gets stripped. But we'll watch as Jason Tatum is obviously a very smart offensive player. He gets switched onto Fred Van Lee. Now he push, he uses his right arm to keep him on his right hip. He sees Gary Trent Jr. is right in front of him. And Fred Van Lee doesn't have a lot of athleticism, so he's not going to block him. What he does is waits for Jason Tatum to go up and then strips him off the ball. Now, obviously, Jason Tatum just does get it back. And now the next play here, again, one-on-one, -on -one, doing a very good job of moving his feet against Jalen Brown. It helps that Christian Coloco's big body comes over and gets a nice little block on Jalen Brown yet again. Same thing, another play does a good job of moving his hands, moving his feet, covers Jalen Brown, ultimately forces him to make a pass, another pass to Derek White. Now I'm going to pause it here for you guys because Derek White misses this three-pointer. The Celtics are going to get an offensive rebound and watch where Fred Van Lee is. Just into the free throw line, he quickly covers Jalen Brown yet again, makes sure he doesn't get a three off, ultimately leads to a missed shot by Marcus Smart and leads to a foul from Blake Griffin on Pascal Siakam. So it's a little plays like this. Now watch Jalen Brown very sneakingly tries to get off OG Nanobi, pretends like he's going to set a screen and runs the other way and Fred Van Lee reads this perfectly, gets right under Jalen Brown and prevents him from getting a basket. It's little plays like that where it really makes you appreciate Fred Van Lee's defensive um, IQ. Again, just here disrupting the shot of Jason Tatum, making sure he misses, and it's little plays like this that go unnoticed. Now, obviously, he doesn't have the most athletic athleticism. Um, now, watch here as he switch on to Jason Tatum. This is one of my favorite players plays from the last game. Jason Tatum similarly tries to run towards the ball handler like he's going to set a pick, pushes slightly off Fred Van Vliet here. Now, Fred Van Vliet is stuck in a weird position because he's obviously not going to block Jason Tatum. So he sees where the ball is going towards Jalen Brown, run towards him, and then strips him of the ball and forces a turnover. So it's little plays like that regarding Fred Van Vliet that really highlight his high IQ on the defensive side. Like I said, he does he have his limitations? On the defensive side, absolutely. He's not going to be blocking people. He's listed at six feet, six one. So he's obviously going to have his limitations, but his basketball IQ is what really helps the Raptors impact defensively. And again, I know there's been this notion regarding Fred Van Lee that he's not a good defensive player. Sure, he gets blown by a little bit. A lot of players do. Pascal does, Scotty does as well. But he has smart IQ where he makes the right plays. And those kind of plays like that go a little bit unnoticed. And I do want to state the obvious guys. He's clearly in a slump, whether that's due to his fiance being pregnant. I do want to state that before we are quick to trade him, 
we do have to recall that fans stated the same thing regarding Pascal Siakam during his Tampa season. That was an entire season. And sure, Fred Van Vliet is struggling and it's difficult, even me as a fan, to watch him shoot as poorly as he does and force up some shots. But I do want to remind you guys, for someone who is considered the GROAT, the greatest Raptor of all time, Kyle Lowry, there's so much chatter. Pretty much the entire last decade ever since Kyle Lowry arrived on the Raptors, a lot of Raptors fans did not want this man on the Toronto Raptors. So what I want is a little bit of patience. Sure, is he struggling? It's, yes. Is it frustrating to watch Fred Van Vliet? Yes. Kyle Lowry went through some of the similar struggles that he did. Now, obviously, I'm not comparing the two players in terms of style of play. Fred Van Vliet, ultimately, I mean, I'm going to be completely honest, he does force the shot a little bit. It's frustrating. But let's hope he learns. He's going to learn and grow as a player because it doesn't determine a player's growth at age 28. He's just entered his prime. And we need to remind ourselves, Kyle Lowry is still playing into his 30s. So there's also been this chatter going around that shorter point guards don't age really well because IT, Kemba Walker, let's remind ourselves, there's still guys like Kyle Lowry and Chris Paul who are six feet and still playing in the NBA. So sure, Fred Van Vliet is struggling. Sure, he's had a knee issue. But I think he can get smarter. Now, I don't expect him to get that much better offensively, but just become smarter with shot selection, become a better passer. We do need to remember, when the Raptors won the championship, Kyle Lowry was around 33 years old at that time. So again, it doesn't necessarily mean just because you're struggling at 28 that the, your career is defined. You become smarter as you get older. And I want to give Fred the benefit of the doubt. So again, I think his fiance is pregnant. I think that could be it. It's, it's, it's very tough, I imagine, taking care of a sick wife and two adolescent children. Well, not adolescent, two babies, I guess. I don't know what they call it, guys. I don't have kids. I'm mixing up my terms here, but you understand what I mean. Give our players some support. Let's send some positive wives for once. I'm sure he's reading some of the negative comments online as well regarding his play. He's been struggling. He knows that. So let's send some positive wives towards Fred Van Lee. Let's hope he plays well, and let's see what happens in the next coming weeks once his baby has been delivered. Hopefully his style of play changes. Hopefully his game gets a little bit better. Hopefully his shooting gets a little bit better. But I do want to hear your thoughts. Make sure to leave your thoughts in the comment section below. And as always, I do have a trivia question for you today. And that trivia question is, which Raptors player has the highest win shares this season? Is it A. Pascal Siakam? Is it B, OG Ananobi? Is it C, Scotty Barnes? Or is it D, Fred Van Vliet? So whoever answers this trivia question correctly first in the comment section gets a shout out in my next video. So that will be it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching this video. And I hope you guys have yourselves a great day.